What's going on guys? Dave here at the Reef Aquarium Shop in Indianapolis, Indiana. And today we are going to talk about our saltwater tank. Finding more. Yeah. How they stop showing up? Cause like I'll be certain. Like okay, yeah, I got all of them, and then here's like 173 of them. 173. <laughs> Why are they there? Okay, that's it. I'm done. So this is our 450 gallon. It has been running forever. Originally, it was a 600 gallon reef tank. It's still a reef tank, but it's only 450 gallons now. It was acrylic and on the same base, it was just taller, uh, but for ease of maintenance and easier lighting uh, and just more efficient coral care, we wanted to shorten that up. So we got a custom tank made by Planet Aquarium, just like our freshwater tank and uh, we sat it on the same base. Most of the coral and stuff is new, but we're gonna take a look at everything in there, uh, including the equipment and what we have running on it, and uh, just give you a rundown on the whole thing. So like I already stated, this is a Planet Aquarium tank, 450 gallons. The glass is super, super thick. It is nuts. Uh, the lighting we have is four, Cobalt Sea Rays positioned over the tank and just suspended there. They put out a lot of light. We are big fans of these lights. It's actually what we have running over our whole coral run here is Cobalt Sea Rays. So we kind of dig them. They put out a ton of light, have the uh, two LED cannons and the fill bar in the middle. It's pretty slick. So those are the Sea Rays and that's the lighting above the tank. As for filtration, this is yet another custom build. This is a giant sump put together by Bashi. All of the equipment in this sump uh, is Bashi. The protein skimmer, the media reactor, everything you see is Bashi. And since it looks so pretty, we definitely didn't want to hide it. We actually lit it. And all of the plumbing comes out the side here and runs through the large overflow box up top, comes down, and that is the life support system that we have on the display. So now let's talk about fish and coral stock. While I could fumble through this accurately, I am going to refer to someone who knows a lot more about this than I do. That's gonna be Deb, our saltwater department manager. She's gonna help us identify these fish and corals and talk about those a little bit. You wanna talk about some stuff? No, I wanna talk about things. Things instead of stuff? No. I guess we can talk about things. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. By the way, this is Deb. Hi, Deb. Oh, hey. How's it going? Hey, it's good. This is our saltwater manager. What do you do around here? Inventory, um, livestock quality control, livestock ordering, um, lots of shenanigans. Lots of shenanigans. A lot of shenanigans. A lot of uh, protein skimmer cleaning. Oh god, so gross. Uh, so I definitely want to talk about all the awesome things in this tank. All right. You can answer it if you need to. What's up? What's up? What's up, man? I'm a bandit. <laughs> a bandit. I'm a reef bandit. Reef bandit. Yes. Hey, well, I got you here. So yeah. I was talking about how this used to be a 600 gallon, right? Yes. Do you remember what year that 600 gallon went up? 2006. 2006. Oh, no. The recession was when? 2007? Yeah. So it would have been 2007, 2008. Probably 2007. Okay. Didn't we transfer all the live rock over? Uh, no, no, the rock we did. Yeah. No, we did. Oh, you didn't we we did one, direct, yeah, right? one piece. Oh, okay. One piece, maybe some a couple of, no, it was just it the was one piece. Yeah, here. okay. Because of the dig out. The rest yeah. of it was all fresh rock that's from Fiji. Yeah. And, and that's how we got the tulip anemone. Yeah, tell me about the tulip anemone, Deb. It, it, it looks great. It, it, it was does. the size of a quarter when it got here. It was a hitchhiker on this yep. rock when we got it. Yep. Yeah. 
Very cool. But now he's huge and beautiful and amazing. And these Zoas are super neat behind that. Bam Bam Zoas. And some uh, little frags of Monty Poor and Bird's Nest getting started there. Mm -hmm. We got some Elegance. This is a cool Elegance. That's uh, in Australia. This one's been in here for a while now, right? It looks like it's been like a year. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. Then we've got these roses going nuts. And then that oh, little guy. It before it split? Like three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> it split in three weeks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Very cool. Some Xenia up top. What are these? Uh... Pallies. Yeah, Pallies. What's this guy here? That is a rainbow Economic. Not to be confused with an enchilada. <laughs> Not an enchilada. You know, they don't do it, but it, there's potential there. Yeah, yeah. And this is a massive blue carpet anemone. And these are uh, Ocellaris or Perculas down here, Dad? Ocellaris. A male-female pair, and then we've got one random uh, black Ocellaris that likes to hang out with them. I'm pretty sure he's a snowflake. A snowflake? Yeah. Ooh. I don't know why they let him join the club, but I'm not mad about it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. And then this is a Colt Coral? Um, what is no. it? Leather. Ooh. Not to be confused with a cold coral. Okay. But, uh, we were in debate. When I say we, literally every human I have encountered yeah. has debated with me that no, it's a cold coral. No, it's not. Um, it may be technically classified, but it's not a standard cold coral. Yeah. And here's the reason that okay. I would argue it and argue it. Yeah. Most leathers are like muscly. You can like feel them. Yeah, this sure. feels just like mucus and that's okay. it. Yeah. I've, I've tried, Kevin, and I've tried, <laughs> I've tried and tried to frag this. You, you cannot frag it. Okay. You just can't. It deflates. It, it deflates and it just, it turns to nothing and it's the wildest thing ever. So just, uh, you just, it's one that you just get and let it keep going bigger and bigger. Yeah. And this is the only one I've ever had in the shop since I've been working here. Yeah. It's the only one I've ever seen. And then this guy down here is really cool. What is this? A uh, pearl, pearl bubble or something like that? Rice bubble. Yeah, I know it is a rice bubble. Rice yeah. bubble. Mm -hmm. Does not go so good with sushi. <laughs> going nuts. Those, tentacles. Those tentacles are going crazy. He is searching for that food. And then we've got some awesome stuff up here. So this little frag that the fish is blocking right there. Uh, what is this guy? That is a pagoda. Ooh. Yeah. It's really cool. It's got those uh, pink polyps on that green base. Yeah. You, you know what? Is that a pagoda or is that like a tubinaria? I don't know. I'll figure it out. All right. That's one of the two. One of the two? One of the two. And I got a big one up there. Kevin, what? those are tubinarias or pagodas? Those are tubinarias. Pagodas are, are the, much the big, bigger. The big oh. polyps. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then we were ogling these oh. earlier. What is the rhodactus? Yeah, those are the rhodactus. I love those guys. I actually got those from like a customer was breaking down his tank. They thought they were too beautiful. They're not like very Yeah, good. absolutely. They look great. Got some frog spawn next to that. And then this Monty is going nuts. I'm actually going to jump above here. Look at that. That is crazy. We've got the uh, orange going nuts, and it had shadowed out this green Monty, uh, and then you can see a little lip of the green starting to peek back out, and we're hoping that uh, that just kind of layers in. That would be pretty sweet. Speaking of pretty sweet, what's this one? Lobelia. Well, Trachophilia. It's a brain! I think it's like one of the prettiest logos that we've had. Yeah, it's got a really cool uh, color pattern on it. It's super meaty. It looks great. Oh yeah. And then uh, this torch is mad because it just fell and we had to replace it, <laughs> put it back on the uh, on the spot it was originally. Uh, but this is a what a gold torch? Yeah, it's a gold torch. He is so he is very pretty, but so angry right now. Uh, and then what, some hairy mushrooms? Yeah. Is that what these guys are? These are from the old tank. Yeah. We had some hairy, like literally this, and actually it's the same spot. 
Uh -huh. Because the oak tank had them all across right here. Yeah, yeah. This section yeah. was hairy mushrooms. It was, it was just covered in hairy mushrooms when it was the 600. They were destined to be here. And then these are just uh, little pieces off of that. And this is super cool too. I love like, this is like a, like a brown and a green, but in like the coolest way possible. Yeah, it has. <laughs> So the base of them, this is a, uh, what's scientific, tuba for music, that's a pipe organ. Okay. Um, this is probably the healthiest pipe organ I've ever seen. Yeah, look at that it, it got like this during quarantine. Uh -huh. We didn't mess with the tank. We did nothing with this tank for like almost two months. Yeah. And everything just like flourished. Like I was showing you Went on nuts. the other side that um, blue-eyed leptastria. Yeah. That's on that uh, clamshell. Yeah. He was literally like the encrusters weren't doing really well in here. Uh -huh. And then we just left them alone for two months. I'm like they're they're starting to flourish, and I'm really proud of them. That's they're awesome. Good. Very cool. Some other cool, uh, some more pallies there. This is a, a rock nem. Uh, that is a carpet. A little, oh, a little maybe mini maxi carpet. Very cool. And then uh, next to that, we've got uh, just an assortment of toadstools. Yeah, those are little toadstools. It's like a, it's like a little bouquet of toadstools <laughs> hanging out on the bottom here. Uh, then this is what type of euphilia? A hammer? Yeah, those are hammers. Nice. Very cool. Is this another nem here? Or is that um, a? That is a mushroom. Big yeah, mushroom. Like a, um, I love it here. That's huge. Duncan's up top here. I'm so happy. So this guy fell inside of those nims. Remember that video I posted on Instagram of him huge? Yeah. He fell inside of the anemone and a lot of it had obviously died. Uh -huh. And now like you could see all like, look at that teeny tiny little one. Oh, ones. they're just popping right back yeah. out where they they're had uh, gotten. Back. Oh, very cool. I'm very happy. That is cool. And uh, this leather here. He's just living his life. He yeah. Doing his thing. Yeah. This is. We started uh, putting some encrusters on some clam shells. Yeah. Orange eye cephastria. Orange eye cephastria. Down here. Yeah, I forgot about those guys. Those are uh, pallies. And These are, are pallies. Yeah. And those are like super blue green. Like, uh, it's like for a second there, just with the uh, size of the polyps, I, I almost thought it was like a closed up uh, Ganyapora or something like that. I can believe it. Right? I can believe it. Oh, very cool. Ooh, what's that? That is a scolinia. That's a scoli. That's a Nice. And that is the majority of the corals in the tank. And now I'm going to pick your brain about the fish. Fish! What is this guy? That I've been... is a Fowlery tank. Kevin. Yeah. Um, he loves that Bowery. And then the Pellini in there too. That's the only Pellini I've like had that's done so, so well. And he got pretty big during quarantine too. These yeah. guys, they just, they're going. They're growing. They are going. Especially these, uh, speaking of growing, these fusiliers <laughs> get more massive every day. Oh, now when we put these in here, we knew they were, they were like what, two inches? Yeah, they were very, very little. They were like, Chromis sized when we stuck them in here, knowing that they would uh, ultimately get too big for the tank. Um, so eventually we're gonna have to pull them out of here and send them to a bigger system. And that's, uh, speaking of pulling out of here and sending to a bigger system, you wanna tell me about this snapper? <laughs> that snapper, um, whenever we got him here at the shop, yeah. he was probably like two inches. Yeah. And then my dad purchased him and he got so big. So big. And I've never seen it. I've, I've, it's common with these guys, yeah. but look, I'm all experienced with what I do here, yeah, yeah. so I'm always excited. Um, these are called the threadfin snappers, the rooster snappers, the hyphen snappers, uh -huh. whatever you want to call it, it's all the same. Yeah. But I didn't know that their dorsal fin got all those streamers. Yes. And look how good, it's so it's good. It's so good. Now this is, a, again, this is another one we're gonna have to yank out of here oh, once yeah. it's uh, like big enough. Foot. Yeah, so. Yeah, we should just put them in a bigger tank. That means we gotta get a bigger tank, Kevin. That means we gotta get a bigger store. <laughs> there you go. Uh, what kind of fairy wrasse is this? That's a blue-sided. 
This is always a highlight of the tank. People ask about this fish all the time. I always feel bad because when people are asking and I show them blue sided, they're like a dull purpley blue. Yeah. And they're like, it doesn't look like that. Like, they, they get to that. They get to that there. Point. You gotta give them lots of love and food. And then this gem tang looking spectacular. I'm under suspicion that that's a female, even though we named her Enrique. Yeah. Um, but I'm under suspicion that it's a female just because a lot of the gem tangs I've handled have uh -huh. very, very vibrant white spots. Yeah. And hers fades from her nose to the tail and then restarts at the tail and fades through the tail. Yeah. With those white spots. It's really weird. Maybe it's a male. I don't know. Yeah. You tell me. And then this uh, pajama cardinal we got from your dad as well, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, there should be another one hanging around here yep. too. Yeah, I but saw them out at the other end. To come out and be around. Yeah. <laughs> what are the fish we got? Um, I know we're missing something. We were looking at a uh, big old, he is a super fat uh, lawnmower blenny on oh the other gosh. side. A we little got a, a vendor. Insert B roll like, here. Send us those without us asking, and I'm yeah. so, so glad they did. Yeah. Because they, like, I had like a dozen of them, and they're so big and pudgy. Yeah. And then we already talked about these clowns, but this one's hamming it up. This one's the female here. They bred a couple times. Yeah. Not survived. Yeah, yeah. They've they definitely tried. laid. They've laid plenty of batches of eggs, but we've done really nothing to promote anything beyond that. Let's see here. Anything else? I know we have that. Uh, There's a mandarin somewhere. Oh, there he is. Cleaner shrimp. Oh, oh mandarin goby. Looking good. But yeah, I think that covers pretty much, uh, pretty much everything in here. Except the things that, oh, can we see the, yes, he's out! Look at, oh, he's going back in. Uh oh. The, the mantis. Can you see him in there? Oh, yes. Let's get our, get our bearings. Where are we? There we go. In that hole right there is the mantis shrimp. Doing his thing, poking his little, uh, poking his little fingers out, testing the water, seeing if there's anything worth eating. Dave. Oh, nice. The uh, big old pudgy lawnmower blade. So big. A uh, huge shout out to Deb here who helped us take care of identifying corals and fish in the tank. If you have any saltwater questions, drop by the store, see Deb, she'll get you covered. Thanks, Deb. You're welcome. Cool. Cool. All right, that's the rundown of the 450 gallon reef display tank we have here, the Reef Aquarium Shop in Indianapolis, Indiana. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and be sure to subscribe for more content like this. We'll see you next time.